G'day viewers. What I want to demonstrate here is the principle of shrinkage and how it applies to building furniture and how important it is in fact. I want to um, attach this bench top <coughs> to this unit and, and be cognizant of the need to accommodate for shrinkage. Now I'm talking uh, timber shrinkage here, not uh, the George Costanza style of shrinkage. When I looked at this I thought, well geez, this is twice as long as it is wide and you'd expect then that we're going to get more shrinkage this way than we are this way. Well, you'd be wrong because all the shrinkage will be this way. And if you wanted to, for example, draw an analogy between this timber and this bunch of straws, as those straws fill with water and then then dry out, all the, sh all the movement is in this direction and then none in the length direction timber is no different it's just a bunch of sort of straws of the length of the grain um, so you need to understand the different styles of shrinkage as they relate to the grain now there's been a lot of work done or there's some work been done in North America about that and let, just let me quickly run through that with you so I can find my pencil sorry guys so there's two, two measurements of shrinkage, that's tangential, uh, which runs parallel to the grain, sort of anywhere around here, that's a tangential line, or a radial line, which is across the grain. Tangential sh uh, shrinkage and expansion is always much greater than radial expansion. Consider this distance, 2 pi r, is greater than this distance. There's the, this distance, there's a lot more cells tangentially than there are radial and therefore each cell as a centre unit will expand therefore greater expansion tangentially than radially and that's proved by say a trunk falls in the in the bush the question is not does anybody hear it it's the question is how will that drying out of the timber affect the shrinkage well what can happen is as a consequence of tangential shrinkage being greater than radial shrinkage it'll actually result in a crack and then as you can see this as evidence yourself in the bush where you have a dried out trunk that opens up in that manner and the fact that this is much greater than this area would give proof to the fact that tangential shrinkage is greater than radial shrinkage now how does that relate to sawn timber like this well let me grab a wet rag and wet the end grain down here so you can actually see the shape of the grain. By definition flat sawn timber which is just sawn straight across the grain like that has the highest shrinkage because the bulk of the flat face is tangential to the grain surface whereas say quarter sawn timber might be like this is sawn this way the bulk of which is across the grain is a more expensive cut but much more stable timber because the the shrinkage is less by virtue of the way it's cut and the definition is between 90 degrees and 60 degrees equals a quarter sawn between 60 degrees and 30 degrees equals rift sawn and between 0 and 30 degrees is flat sawn. So what have we got here? And again, this is something you need to do when you go out and buy your timber, is to inspect the end grain. You may not have a protractor like this, but you can see that the actual direction of the grain as a function of the flat surface is about 60 degrees in this case. About well, 50 degrees there, so it's getting a bit low. Definitely 90 degrees on that short piece, etc. So the bulk of this is, would be argued, is quarter sawn, and therefore the expansion and shrinkage left to right would be considerably less. Juicy out.